In this video, I want to offer a quick rebuttal or response to Pine Creek Doug. Um, so I had some back and forth with him as he responded to my rebuttal, my critique of his flying man thought experiment. So in his thought experiment, it seems to be it's intended perhaps like a reductio ad absurdum that if you accept belief in the resurrection of Jesus based upon 1 Corinthians 15, 3 to 8, then you ought to accept belief that a man flew over the Grand Canyon based upon Doug's testimony in his flying man thought experiment. I said a few things in response to that. I, I pointed out, first of all, that uh, uh, he made that up, right? It's, it's not an actual account. Second point I made is that uh, you should keep an open mind. And, and if there actually were testimonial evidence for a man flying over the Grand Canyon, then take a look at that evidence and evaluate it. Likewise, take a look at the evidence for the resurrection and evaluate it. Keep an open mind in both cases. Don't preclude your investigation of the world a priori because you think you've already got it figured out and you've excluded out of the gate certain possibilities. So keep an open but critical mind. Now, a couple other things. Uh, Pine Creek Doug, then we, he commented on my uh, on YouTube where I had my video posted and we went back and forth and I put some of the comments here. <clears throat> and uh, so one important comment or observation I made, he kept saying, well, would you believe in the resurrection of Jesus based only on the testimony of the creed of 1 Corinthians 15, 3 to 8? And I pointed out that I've never met a Christian who believes in the resurrection of Jesus based only on 1 Corinthians 15, 3 to 8. That would be a little bizarre. Right? The Bible itself, the New Testament in particular, is a, is a library of sources. In this case, sources about Jesus and the early Christian movement. And that all informs the way a Christian thinks. Christians, of course, also have a wide variety of other bases, catalysts, under which, and lines of evidence under which they hold their Christian beliefs. For example, particular religious experience, testimony within the Christian community, uh, perhaps a, a range of apologetic arguments uh, that are reasoning for the existence of God and truth claims of Christianity and so on. So all sorts of things inform the way a Christian believes, what they believe about Jesus rising from the dead. It's never just First Corinthians 15, but Doug pushes the issue and says, yeah, but uh, would you believe in the, uh, the resurrection of Jesus based only on First Corinthians 15? And if you look down to the bottom of his comment here in particular, so he puts it like this. Would you believe in the flying man based on just the flying man creed? Yes or no. Would you believe in Jesus' resurrection based only on 1 Corinthians 15, 3 to 8? And then he says, I hear you saying no to both. Now, the problem with, with Doug's question and comment here is he's conflating two different issues. The, the issue of psychology and the issue of epistemology. Psychology deals with a description of when uh, you would find yourself forming particular beliefs and rejecting other beliefs based upon experiences and evidence. And that's just a psychological description. Epistemology is the evaluation of when are you justified or rational in adopting a particular belief and adopt and rejecting another belief. When are you uh, rationally obliged to adopt a particular belief and reject another belief? Uh, and so those are different kinds of questions. And Doug does not distinguish them here. It's one thing to say, well, you know, I think I may believe in the resurrection based upon X and Y. And it's another thing entirely to say, you could not believe rationally in the resurrection based upon an X and Y. X and y or yes, you would be justified in believing it based on X and Y, or you would be rationally required to believe in it based on X and Y. For example, uh, if I were to ask you a hypothetical question like Doug's, and I said, would you believe that your brother was the Pope based only on uh, an eyewitness testimony of someone you knew that said they saw a story on CNN that said your brother had been made the Pope? Would you believe the Pope based that he was the Pope based upon that? And that's a question that could be both descriptive psychologically, you'd say, yeah, you could speculate how you might react to that experience of that person's testimony. And that could also be a question of epistemology. Would you be justified in believing your brother had become the Pope? It's certainly a surprising turn of events based solely upon the sober witness of somebody that you, you know, believed and generally trusted. And 
Oh, here's another one. And maybe this one is, is a little more, uh, less, less fanciful. So imagine a couple has been married for 30 years and they've had a happy, faithful relationship. And then uh, somebody comes to the, the, the one spouse and says, your spouse is cheating on you. And how do I know? Well, because I saw them together at a restaurant behaving inappropriately. Would that person's testimony alone be enough to persuade that spouse that their spouse was cheating on them? And again, that's a question that can be answered descriptively in terms of psychologically, how would they react to that parent evidence for infidelity? And it could also <clears throat> be answered in terms of epistemic justification. So would they be rational or justified to accept this person's testimony and thus to believe their spouse was unfaithful? Would they be obliged rationally to believe it? And, and those are important questions, but you can't conflate them all. And what matters here is this, <clears throat> excuse me, that Doug's whole thought experiment is, is, is really quite insignificant if he's only talking about psychology, because again, psychology is, is in a sense, neither here nor there, you know, people respond in different ways to evidence. It all depends on whether his argument is actually epistemic. It's concerned with the epistemological formation of belief. When are you justified or rational to believe something? And so what he has to say is this, he actually can't just ask a rhetorical question, which is ambiguous between psychology and epistemology. What he has to do is say, you would not be rational or justified to form belief in the resurrection of Jesus based solely upon the creed of 1 Corinthians 15, 3 to 8. That's what he would have to argue. And frankly, I mean, I've, I've been asking him in our exchanges to argue precisely that point. Demonstrate that, in fact, you would uh, not be rational to form belief upon that evidence alone. And if and until you can demonstrate that, your thought experiment does not get off the ground and you cannot respond to objections simply by asking or posing a rhetorically ambiguous question that conflates epistemology with psychology. So for that reason, I'm sad to say that Doug's flying man thought experiment does not even get off the ground.